As we grow up, moments of stark realization are inevitable. Our parents don't actually know everything. Dinosaurs don't still exist. A whole dollar isn't really that much money. For Warren Schaefer, one of those moments meant coming face to face with the darker side of entrepreneurship at a young age. When I was 12 years old, my father's business totally failed and he went bankrupt. And I actually ended up living with another family when I was 13. In Warren's opinion, there are two ways that businesses die. Number one, they run out of money, like what he witnessed up close and personal as a preteen. Or number two, the founder quits. Ensuring your company is making money and not losing it is the most basic operation of any business. One every founder, investor, and startup employee is constantly taking a pulse on. But quitting, giving up, moving on from the project you began, that's a less discussed yet very real founder struggle. And the key that helps not only prevent negative outcomes, but gives a company the traction to find massive success is having the guiding light of a North Star. There are always exciting things happening in the world of small business. The news that grabs the headlines, though, are always the highlights, the overnight successes, the billion dollar IPOs, the massive exits. But just like your Instagram feed, that's never the whole story. Let's look deeper than the headlines and the press photos. Underneath all of that is the real work building something valuable and lasting. Don't get me wrong, I love crazy success stories and can be drawn into those big flashy tales just as much as the next person. But we all know that what's more important than the destination is how you get there. It's the struggles you have to overcome and the insights you learn along the way that make you who you are. So those are the stories we're telling. It's raw, it's honest, and maybe it's exactly what you need to hear. I'm Hillary Georgie, and this is The Journey. For as far back as he can remember, Warren has been in love with entrepreneurship and the idea of blazing his own trail. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an entrepreneur and my dad was an entrepreneur and I looked up to him and was always fascinated by people who were kind of carving out their own path. Warren's dad was an electrical engineer who developed consumer electronics products and then sold them via his own small business. Unfortunately, that business, as you've probably guessed, went into a downturn and couldn't recover. Warren's dad went bankrupt, and the pressure of finances put a strain on the family that left Warren virtually on his own. Both my parents moved away, and I was fortunate to have friends who lived nearby who had six kids, and they just brought me into their family. And so I I spent most of high school living with another family, and, and I think in many ways, I learned a lot from my father about what to do, but also more importantly, what not to do. As the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And as Warren's home life dissolved around him, he turned to other smart and inspiring people he could learn from. You're the average of the people you spend the most time with. And so if you can surround yourself with smart people, then I think you're more likely to learn. I've been really lucky to have a lot of mentors in my life. And and I think in, in part because my family somewhat dissolved, I sought out mentors. In high school, I got paired with a, a mentor who is a, who is a businessman. When I was in college, he gave me a book called Risk Takers, and it was just profiles of different entrepreneurs. And that book actually did influence my decision of whether or not to play it safe on the career path or to go and venture out on my own. And that was a moment that I felt was really pivotal. Warren went to school at Harvard, where he had a hard time committing to a major. He was inspired by the idea of building something great as an entrepreneur. But after witnessing what business failure had done to his family, he was afraid to deviate from the safe path. My biggest motivator is to not be my father. And partly because I I saw my father hit real financial turmoil and just the effects that it had on him and, and his family. And so I had this real strong urge to play it safe. And and that's part of, you know, why I went to work in finance. I just really spent a lot of time agonizing of the decision, right, of what to do with my life. Finance was the safest career path he could think of. He was good at it, and at his job, he was surrounded by smart, rational people, and he got to spend his days learning the ins and outs of money management. But there was one big thing missing. Passion. I was at a really successful private equity firm, and 
you know, literally flying around on a private jet to go to meetings with, with my boss. And I thought, okay, I'm going to quit and I'm going to go and work on a startup. And I don't even know what the idea is. Warren moved back to LA where he went through a startup accelerator program. He began to familiarize himself with the art of business building, even starting a small business with his brother to test the waters. We made every first time founder mistake. We didn't talk about equity up front. The idea that we were working on was opportunistic. We hadn't really talked to customers about it. Uh, it was just sort of, we're like, this should exist, right? Wrong. The company didn't work out, but the experience taught Warren a lot about business development and co-founder relationships. And that's when Warren met Alex. He had split up with his co-founder around the same time that, that my brother and I split up. And so we were both kind of the products of founder divorce. And he had started a business called Social Engine, which was software for people and companies to create their own social networks. And I just started helping him on the business for fun. Alex and Warren became an unstoppable duo. Together, they scaled Social Engine into a massively successful software business with 15,000 paying customers, including MasterCard, Apple, EA, and even NASA. After receiving several offers to sell the business, Social Engine was acquired by Room 214 in 2014. Alex and Warren were off to the races again, this time with an even more popular idea. We thought, why is there no just dead simple way to share a video online? Like, why do I have to go to YouTube and log in and use my Google Plus identity? So we totally took the friction out of video sharing and we put it up on Reddit and we're like, hey, we made this thing. What do you guys think? And it just took off immediately. It was very much that classic startup mentality orthodoxy of put something out there, see if people use it. Within weeks, we had investors coming to us. Over the years of developing what they called VidMe, they raised $8 million and accumulated more than 25 million monthly users. And they did all of that with only 12 full-time employees. I realized that that's not the best way to build a scalable business. I think in the early days, it's, it's useful to have a small team because you can move quickly and, and make decisions fast. But the long term, if you want to be a scalable, successful business, then you do need to hire more people who care about the mission and can execute without you being involved in every decision. They sold VidMe to Giphy before Warren even began thinking about scaling their small team. But it's that concept of having a mission, of finding that thing he was passionate about as a founder, and the thing that he'd want his employees to be passionate about as well that stuck with him. After the break, hear how Warren's perspective of entrepreneurship shifted from find an idea to find a mission and how having that so-called North Star has guided him professionally and personally. As part of Salesforce's continued commitment to small businesses, they've recently announced Salesforce Care for Small Business, a combination of free products to help during the COVID-19 crisis. New customers will get three months free access to out-of-the-box CRM, Salesforce Essentials, and Analytics Solution Tableau, as well as six months free access to collaboration tool, Quip. Now, more than ever, small businesses need the right tools to connect with their customers. Salesforce is here to help. To learn more, visit salesforce.com slash the journey. Warren and his business partner, Alex, had just sold their business and were searching for a new idea to nurture into a company. They threw all kinds of ideas around, from face masks for men to creating another video platform, but none of them resonated with Warren. I remember talking to my wife and she's like, you gotta make something that you would wanna use. That's the algorithm that you need to run. And so that really became the guiding North Star for how we decided what we wanted to work on was, would we want to use this? And then the other component was, would we pay for it? Rather than pursue an idea where the only upside was a quick buck, Warren wanted to focus on something that aligned with his own interests and values. I've always loved audio. As a teenager, I got introduced to books on tape and I've always been happiest when I've had great audio because it feels like you have a companion throughout life's downtime. And we both love great teachers all of the e-learning space right now is video focused. It's all based on this idea that you have to stare at a screen in order to learn in a structured way. And we thought, what if we make it audio first? And 
it just felt right to both of us. Alex and Warren saw an opportunity in the market for an audio-focused e-learning company. There was just one problem. Historically, people haven't exactly been willing to pay for audio. I went to a friend who had a podcast company and I'm like, hey, we're going to make an e-learning company, but we're going to be audio first. And he's like, that's a terrible idea. No one pays for audio. And I felt really dejected after that meeting. Warren's passion for the business was there, but the profit model didn't exist, at least not yet. Rather than conform to the existing norms of the audio industry, Warren and Alex decided they'd be the ones to shake it up. We care about education. We care about learning. We think it's powerful. We care about having a mission that we believe in. It's doing some good. We said, you know what? Maybe no one pays for audio today, but they will. And that was really the aha turn of, hey, the best companies are the ones that fly in the face of conventional wisdom. They were determined to see their idea through. Unlike some of Warren's and Alex's other business ideas that wouldn't have withstood that kind of upfront resistance, their commitment to a bigger vision gave them the power to break into a new market. I actually think starting with the mission is the most important thing because it's such an important North Star for what you're trying to do as an organization. And it's so easy as a startup to get distracted. So my big learning has been that as a leader, you really have to set that North Star and and it's okay to, to zig and zag, but ultimately you want to get to that destination. And it's that North Star that he and Alex turn to for guidance when they face everything from big business decisions to setting the tone and culture for the company. Unlike Vidme, I've grown to believe that people really are the heart of a company and really being intentional of how we set the culture and build a long-term organization that can scale both in terms of customers, but also team members too. The mission really matters. So the number one thing that I look for when thinking about who I want to work with is, do they care about the mission too? And if empowering others to learn more and to be great teachers doesn't excite you, then this isn't going to be a great fit. But commitment to the mission isn't the only thing that Warren communicates to his team. He also instilled the philosophy of be kind. We have another cultural guideline, which I'm excited about, which is don't be nice, be kind. There's a real difference between the two that a lot of people don't realize. Nice is trying to be pleasant for the sake of avoiding short-term displeasure, whereas kind is honesty mixed with compassion. And if you deprive somebody of honest feedback, that's not really being kind to them. The idea of be kind extends past how to treat others in the workplace. It also guides Warren's interaction with himself and others every day. If I think about myself 10 years ago, I think of somebody who had a lot of self-doubt and was really afraid of making mistakes. And I think life is about learning. And if you're not making mistakes, you're probably not learning. The word that I repeat to myself a lot is kind and to be kind to myself and to be kind to others too. That's the one piece of advice I have, I think at any age is self-compassion and compassion for others. Warren has experienced the heartaches of business, first as a young bystander and now as a founder and CEO himself. But those struggles are much easier to tackle or avoid altogether when you are following the light of a brighter vision. For Warren, that means sticking to his values of being kind and honest, while also pursuing the company's mission of connecting eager learners with knowledgeable teachers in the most accessible way possible. Finding that killer idea, defining or creating your market, hiring, firing, sales, all of these problems are most easily solved when you have that true north to follow. If you do that, you eliminate the barriers to the heights you can climb. Because as Michelangelo says, quote, the greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. Today's uncertain business climate makes it critical to stay in touch with your customers and employees. That's why Salesforce recently announced Salesforce Care for Small Business, a combination of free products to help businesses during the COVID-19 crisis. New customers will get three months free access to out-of-the-box CRM Salesforce Essentials and Analytics Solution Tableau, as well as six months free access to collaboration tool Quip. Salesforce is here to help you stay connected. To learn more, 
visit salesforce.com slash the journey.